We will now take you to stories from across the world. The mortal remains of Bollywood's legendary actor Sri Devi will be brought back to India today. Her last rites are expected to take place in Mumbai in the afternoon. Before the funeral, her body will be kept at her residence where celebrities and family members will pay their last respects. She died due to a massive cardiac arrest on Saturday in Dubai. Thousands of Catholic pilgrims from India and Sri Lanka participated in the annual feast at the reconciliatory point of St. Anthony Church in an in uninhabited island in Park Strait under Sri Lankan administration. Around 2,000 Indian fishermen sailed from India's southern Ramashwaram island in boats as the fisher folks of the two nations came together to celebrate and offer special prayers at the church. With the vibrant spring festival of Holi around the corner, people all over India ushered in the Festival of Colour on Sunday. Holi is a single day annual festival that marks the onset of spring which starts on Thursday. The celebration is often referred to as the Holiday of Colour. Hundreds of pilgrims and tourists gather in the town of Barsana in the northern India to celebrate Holi. And during the festival, men from the neighboring village of Nangaon sing provocative songs at women from Barsana who then use huge wooden sticks to beat the men as they crouch on the ground while holding shields. The festival has become immensely popular over the years and now draws hundreds of devotees from across the country. Local artists in India's western Vadodara city collaborated with AG's Mercedes Benz to recreate miniatures of vintage car models revisiting the charm of the bygone era. The four day exhibition, which started on February 22nd at Sir John Art Gallery in the city, concluded yesterday showcasing Mercedes Classic Benz collection replicas made by artists from around the city. Turtle lovers gathered at the Rushikulya beach in India's eastern Odisha state to witness the annual nocturnal mass nesting of olive ridley turtles. The turtles crawl ashore from the Bay of Bengal to lay eggs at the 2.5 km long river mouth. The turtles usually visit the coast for nesting from January to April in India and every year. The Rushikulya Sea Turtle Protection Committee spends four to five months preparing a clean and safe beach for the nesting. China has become the vice president of the Financial Action Task Force, a global body mandated to combat terror financing. This comes just days after Pakistan, China's all-weather friend, was given until June to prepare an action plan against terror groups operating on its soil to avoid listing on the FATF grey list. An explosion destroyed a convenience store and a home in the central English city of Leicester, injuring at least six people. Police said there was no immediate indication the explosion was linked to terrorism. The city's fire department said it sent six fire engines after the report of a large explosion and a building collapse. At least five people have been injured in the incident. Students and family members returned to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida for an orientation following the Valentine's Day school shooting that killed 17 students and staff. The shooting reignited an intense debate about gun safety laws with Stoneman students emerging as national voices calling for gun control. Britain's opposition Labour Party will uh, back a new customs union with the European Union. 
Its Brexit policy chief said this move could make commerce with the bloc easier but limit the country's ability to strike other trade deals. The Keir Starmer said his party had agreed that if it wins power, it should negotiate a new union with the bloc and that Conservative Prime Minister Theresa May may face a potential rebellion over her position on the issue. European Commission Chief John claude Juncker told Western Balkan countries to see 2025 as the date when any of them could join the European Union, provided they worked to meet the criteria for membership, stopping in Albania following a visit to Macedonia on a tour of countries aspiring to join the EU. And Juncker uh, said uh, 2025 was a possible entry date for all, not just the front runners. Michael McCormack has been elected Australia's new Deputy Prime Minister after being selected as the leader of the country's National Party. The junior partner in the country's coalition government, McCormack, replaces former Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce, who was forced to resign last week and amid public anger over an extramarital affair with his former press secretary. Campaigning has begun for Egypt's presidential elections. Hundreds of billboard advertisements in support of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi have sprung up on the streets of Cairo. Al-Sisi, who won a landslide victory in the 2014 elections, is pitted against Musa, Mustafa Musa, who entered the race in the last moment to save the government from embarrassment of a candidate vote. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu held, held the U.S. announcement that it would move its embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem in May as a great moment for the citizens of Israel. The United States said on Friday it will open its embassy to Israel in Jerusalem in May, a move from Tel Aviv that reverses decades of U.S. policy and is bound to trouble U.S. allies who have already objected. The ancient Colosseum in Rome was lit in red to protest Pakistan's blasphemy law. The husband and daughter of Asiya Bibi addressed hundreds of protesters gathered outside the Roman amphitheater. Demonstrators also pledged solidarity to the minority Christian population who have been hit hard by wars in Aleppo, Syria, Mosul and Iraq. Sixteen Turkish women have been awarded death sentences by an Iraqi court for joining Islamic State. The judge said that the women confessed to either marrying ISIS fighters or providing them with logistical help to carry out terrorist attacks. Damascus residents expressed skepticism about a Syrian ceasefire after the United Nations passed resolution demanding a 30-day truce across the country to allow aid, access and medical evacuation. Iran said pro-Damascus forces would press ahead with attacks on an insurgent enclave near the Syrian capital as ground fighting raged on there in defiance of the ceasefire. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan called for the extradition of Syrian Kurdish leader Saleh Muslim to Turkey following his arrest in the Czech Republic. Muslim top Kurdish politician has full citizenship rights as a Syrian national and was visiting Europe in an official capacity. In a statement, the party accused the Turkish state of demanding the arrest of individuals who are not its citizens without any legal justifications. Pope Francis said Syria was being martyred by continued attacks, killing civilians in the eastern Ghouta district. 
calling for an immediate end to violence and access to humanitarian aid. France's call for an immediate uh, end to the violence so food and medicine can get in and the sick and wounded can leave. At least 14 people were killed and 40 wounded when Islamist car suicide bombers and gunmen tried to storm the headquarters of a counter-terrorism unit in the southern port city of Aden on Saturday. The Islamic State claimed responsibility for what it described as two martyrdom operations targeting the camp in Tawahi district in the southwestern Aden. A Palestinian from the Gaza Strip uh, died after the Israeli Navy fired on the boat uh, and two others were sailing in. Uh, the Navy opened fire and after the boat ignored warnings and strayed from a permitted fishing area in the northern Gaza Strip towards Israel, one of the men in the boat was seriously wounded and later died. The downing of an Israeli F-16 fighter jet earlier this month by a Syrian anti-aircraft missile resulted from a professional error by the crew. The Israeli military said on Sunday its investigations found that an anti-aircraft missile shot down the Israeli war plane while it was returning from a bombing raid on Iran-backed positions in Syria on February 10. It was the most serious confrontation yet between Israel and Iranian-backed forces in Syria. Thousands of ultra-Orthodox Jews crammed into the streets of Jerusalem to mourn an 86-year-old sage, the head of an ultra-Orthodox group known as the Jerusalem Faction. Rabbi Shmuel Orbach headed an offshoot of the ultra-Orthodox community he fiercely objected the recruitment of ultra-Orthodox soldiers to the Israeli army. He passed away in Jerusalem on Saturday after suffering a heart attack. Several hundred people gathered in St. Petersburg to commemorate murdered Russian opposition leader Boris Nemtsov, calling for President Vladimir Putin to be ousted just three weeks before a presidential election. Nemstov, one of Putin's most vocal critics, was shot dead on February 27th in 2015 as he walked across a bridge near the Kremlin. He had been working on a rep report examining Russia's role in the conflict in Ukraine. Security forces in the Democratic Republic of Congo's capital Kinshasa shot dead a civil society activist and wounded several others people during church-led demonstrations against President Joseph Kabila. A church groups have become the main opposing force to Kabila, who has been in power since 2001, as political opposition parties have been hobbled by infighting or seen their leaders forced into exile. A total of 110 girls are missing after an attack on a school in northeast Nigeria by suspected Boko Haram insurgents. And this is regarded to be one of the largest abductions since the Chebok kidnappings of 2014. The insurgents drove into the town of Dapchi on Monday and attacked the girls' school, sending hundreds of students fleeing. Thousands of people rallied in freezing weather across Romania, protesting a government call to sack the country's chief anti-corruption prosecutor and demanding the resignation of the justice minister on February 22nd. The minister, Tudorel Tudor, had called for the president to dismiss the prosecutor, Laura Kodruta Kovisi, for excess of authority. A move that would disrupt a crackdown on corruption in one of the European Union's most graft-prone members.
Hundreds of Catalans staged a protest at Spain's King Philippe, attended a welcome dinner for the 2018 Mobile World Congress due to start in Barcelona today, bagging pots and pans and waving pro-independent Estelda flags. Supporters of Catalonia split from Spain argued with pro-Spain demonstrators who arrived at the scene near of Barcelona's music palace where the king delivered a speech stressing the importance of the event for the region. Pro-independence protesters clash with Catalan police in Barcelona as the demonstrators against a visit by Spain's King Philippe supporters of Catalonia split from Spain have expressed criticism to what they describe as lack of the king's attention to the region and his refusal to promote political dialogue between the central government and other parties. So it was the king's first trip to Catalonia since an October regional vote for independence. Samsung Electronics unveiled its uh, flagship Galaxy S9 smartphone with an emphasis on visual applications for social media, hoping to attract tech-savvy young consumers to web whether a market slowdown. Now, Samsung launched the S9 at the Mobile Gadget Fair in Barcelona to prove how the world's biggest smartphone maker could innovate in a category in which the big players are technologically closer than ever. Chinese mobile device manufacturers Huawei unveiled its first 5G chip ahead of the annual Mobile World Congress. The company's chief executive for consumer business Richard Yu explained at a presentation in Barcelona that the chip will be the first to meet the standards of the third generation partnership project for the 5G internet connection speed. Now, Finland's Nokia released a new series of smartphones and came alive, one of the most selling phones on the late 90s. They are Nokia 8100 ahead of the annual Mobile World Congress, set up by ex-Nokia executives who have licensed the famous brand to sell phones worldwide. HMD Global has focused on mid-price Androids and even sub-$100 price phones since entering the smartphone market. A strong battle of third thunderstorms swept across portions of the Ohio Valley and Tennessee, providing producing high winds, hail and flooding. Much of Kentucky was under flash flood warning or watches after being saturated by rain in the past week or so. At least five people have been reportedly killed in the Midwest due to tornadoes. The severe winds tore roofs of homes and businesses in portions of Tennessee and Kentucky. More than 7,000 travelers were left stranded at an airport in Urumqi city in northwest China after heavy fog grounded flights since early Sunday morning. Reports suggest at least 79 outgoing flights were delayed, affecting passengers. Chinese President Xi Jinping expressed his warmest welcome to the world in a video during the eight-minute show at the closing ceremony of Pyeongchang 2018 Winter Olympics on Sunday. After the excitement of two weeks' competition, the Winter Olympics drew to a close in the Olympic Stadium in Pyeongchang, South Korea. The Olympic flag was handed over to Chen Jining, mayor of Beijing, at the ceremony. Members of the Chinese community in Sao Paulo perform traditional dragon dances and put on Kung Fu martial arts displays to celebrate the dawning of the Lunar New Year. The famous dragon dance is performed by a group of dancers who hold the red beast body on long sticks, a colorful lion dance. was also performed in respect of the gods, whilst martial arts was demonstrated in a rich display 
of Chinese culture. Sports news now. The 2018 Winter Olympics drew to an end on Sunday with the glittering closing ceremony in Pyeongchang, South Korea. Peace was the theme of the night as the 23rd Winter Games were closed. The contingents from North and South Korea marched together under a unified Korean flag. The showpiece event was witnessed by a packed house of 35,000 spectators at the Olympic Stadium, including dignitaries such as Ivanka Trump, daughter of US President Donald Trump. The next edition of the Winter Olympics will be held in Beijing in 2022.